Good evening, Pammy. Just me and you, as I always say. Mm -hmm. Well, we're almost finished with Romans 15. Well, we are going to finish Romans 15 tonight. Sounds like my neighbor's running a weed eater or a leaf blower. Don't you think? Can you, can you hear it? Mm -mm, not no? really. Okay. Judy Hausner's on. Hi, Judy. I can't see that you're on, but Pam can. Judy and Bill, let's see who else comes on tonight. Probably yeah, summer Judy. vacations and... Judy said hello. Yeah, I said hi, Judy. Oh, and Bill. she said hello. Oh, we'll see who... Uh, what about your mom? I, don't I know, know some people are out of town. And I think we might be losing people because it's getting late in the Book of Romans, right? We've It's about time to start a new book or series. So. Maybe. Well, if you look at chapter 16, it goes pretty quickly. So it's just a, a lot of thanking people. greeting. It's a greeting, if you will. Greet so-and-so. So we're almost finished with the book of Romans. Hope you've enjoyed it. I always enjoy going through Romans. And we're going to be looking at verse 14 of chapter 15 all the way through to the end of night, hopefully. So maybe those that, uh, maybe some others will join in. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you for this day that we can uh, study together once again and uh, help us as we look at your word. Thank you for working in and through us to accomplish your will. And uh, we're thankful for our salvation and all that that entails. And um, help us have a heart for the nations like Paul did. Help us to look for more opportunities to share the gospel with those around us here and also look for uh, ways to send more missionaries to the unreached people groups and we ask this in christ's name amen all right well it's been a couple of weeks we uh, missed last week and it's going to be back on tonight uh, paul is now in closing the book of romans mentioning that a few things that he would like his fellow believers to pray for. He's going to talk, talk about a mission trip that he would like to take. Um, he would like to go see the Romans, uh, the believers at Rome, on his way to Spain. And he's also talking about how God is working through him and other believers to reach the nations with the gospel. So that's kind of what we're looking at tonight. And... <clears throat> The theme really fits in at the end as well, trying to bring the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians together because when there's disunity, you can't be advancing the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. That's so clear uh, in practice and what we see in the Bible that when people are infighting and when there's division, you can't be doing what God's calling you to do when there's, there's bickering among the believers. So... Paul is trying to bring unity to the church at Rome with really strong doctrinal points about all of us needing a Savior, both groups. So I'm not going to go all the way through that, but even in this final chapter, well, not final chapter, but uh, instructional in chapter 15, we're going to see this theme as well. And let's pick it up in verse 14 tonight. Concerning you, my brethren... And in the context of Romans, it's Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians. This is all the way through the book. And if you remember all the way back in chapter 1, how he said he would love to see the believers at Rome. And uh, now he's going to kind of end with that as well. So, concerning you, my brother, and I myself am also convinced that you yourselves are full of goodness. Filled with all knowledge and able to admonish one another. But I have written very boldly to you on some points as to remind you again because of the grace that was given to me from God to be a minister. Now, let's just stop right there. Does Paul believe that the believers at Rome, it was a good group of believers? Yes. But he had to speak strongly at some points to bring them together. Now, there's not too many of us on tonight, but all of us can recognize that whenever you have a group of people that come from all different backgrounds, sooner or later you can rub each other the wrong way, right? 
You can start to disagree over secondary issues, minor issues, and it start to cause a division. And when you're bickering back and forth among yourselves, what's going to happen? Disunity. Disunity. It happens in the workplace, happens in families, happens in the church. And so Paul is wanting the believers at Rome to be on mission, right? Uh, and the book of Philippians does the same thing. And so he speaks some positive things here, but he reminds them that he had to be strong in certain areas. And Paul reminds them that he's a minister of Christ Jesus to the nations, ministering as a priest the gospel of God, so that my offering of the nations may be acceptable, sanctified by the Spirit. So Paul acknowledging once again that he has a desire to reach the nations because that's what God has called him to do. And what I love about this, it's called the gospel of God. Why? Why do you think that's important? Because it was his plan all along. Yeah, it's his gospel, and we're commanded. We didn't come up with it. We're commanded to understand it, believe it ourselves. Remember, gospel is just shorthand for the life, death, resurrection of Jesus. It's just a shorthand word. Good news. Good news about what? The life of Jesus. Everything that entails that. And calling people, whether no matter who you are, to repent and trust in Jesus. So once again, he's just saying, um, I'm serving God, offering the gospel to the nations. And what I love about this is reminding ourselves that any good that we do, any ministry that Pam has done, Judy, you, others, myself, look what he says. First of all, we are ministering the gospel of God, sanctified by the Spirit. And he says, Therefore in Christ Jesus I have found reason for boasting in things pertaining to God. For I will not presume to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished, notice this word, through me. Is that good to be reminded of? Both, right? Whatever you're doing, ministering to people, doing a Bible study, whatever it might be, outreach of uh, mercy, whatever it is, um, what Christ has accomplished through us. Where would we be today without the powerful work of Christ in our lives? Saving us initially, empowering us. So it's good to be reminded of that, that any good of still being a Christian still loving to read scripture, still wanting to preach the gospel, still wanting to make a difference in this world, serve our family, serve the family of Christ, the body of Christ, serve other people, is the power of Christ through us. What Christ has accomplished through me, resulting in the obedience of the nation, nations by word or deed. Both, uh, Judy, you're on tonight. You've taught Bible studies. Pam, you've, stopped, you've taught Bible studies. So have I. We've, so we've done the spoken word, teaching, but also we've done deeds. Good deeds, right? We're called to be, do good deeds. Mm -hmm. But only by, we recognize it's only by the power of Christ through us. And that's what he's calling us to do. In Paul's day, Paul being an apostle, look at verse 19. In the power of signs and wonders, in the power of the Spirit. I don't know about you, I haven't been able to do any signs and wonders. Have you? Nope. But you have had the power, inspired by the Spirit, to continue to study, continue to have insight in how to best minister to people. But definitely Paul is unique. He's one of the apostles, and God gave the apostles attesting miracles as they were reaching the nations, as they were going out to new areas. And Paul mentions that from Jerusalem and round about as far as Elycrim, I have fully preached the gospel. But now he's saying, I desire, he's speaking now of a wish, I have a desire, I have a dream, I have plans. Hopefully, what? God allows this to happen. Take a look at what he says. I aspire to preach the gospel 
not where Christ has already been named. Do we need to be reminded of that? Yep. Always. Supporting missions. If we're not if we're not gonna go ourselves, supporting missionaries. Hi, Denise, Joe. Yeah. We always we want to reach people in our own community. How are we gonna reach the nations? If we're not gonna go, we need to be what? Sending. We need to be part of a church that believes in sending money. If we're not going to go, we're, let's send money to, in our case, send it to a good organization that manages it well and puts missionaries on the field to where they do not have to come back all the time and raise support. Who's going to reach the nations? We support not only through our own church, but individually we support people in hard-to-reach places. I mentioned Sunday about helping somebody uh, be on the mission field in a difficult area, right? Because our desire should be like Paul's, and that is to reach the nations. The obedience, to see them to, what? Come to obedient faith in Christ. That's his desire. Not to build on another man's foundation. He always had a desire to reach the nations. They who had no news of him shall see, and they who have not heard shall understand. For this reason I have often been prevented from coming to you. But now with no further place for me in these regions, and since I've had for many years, here it is, a longing to come to you in Rome. Whenever I go to Spain, if you have your maps in the Bible, uh, back of your Bible, um, if you look, I don't know, probably if you have a Bible, you've got maps. So if you take a look down where Jerusalem is, down where Israel's at, on up into Turkey, Greece, right? Rome. So Paul's like, when I go to Rome, we had a lady in our church. She's a doctor, lives in Spain, just a couple weeks ago. And Paul's like, I want to go to Spain. Why? I want to make sure the gospel gets there. So he's telling the Romans, uh, when I come to you, as I'm going, I, I desire to go to Spain. I want to stop and see you guys. I want you to help me, by the way, to get there. Why? Because Paul was supported by churches, the early church supported missionaries. Sometimes they would work. Paul built tents. He made tents. Sometimes he did. Well, what kind of freedom do missionaries have if we back home can send money to put them on the mission field 24-7? Right? So, that's what Paul's saying here. Did you look up the map, Pam? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, now the question is, did Paul get to go there? That's his wish. Some people say yes, some people say no. Some earlier Christians, after Paul's time, uh, said that Paul did make it to Spain. The book of Acts doesn't say that he did. Last thing we see in the book of Acts is that he's sitting in Rome on trial, right? And then is executed in Rome. But here he has a desire to see the Roman believers whenever I go to Spain. For hoping to see you in passing and to be helped on my way there by you when I have first enjoyed your company for a while. But now I'm going to Jerusalem. So if you have your maps out, he says, I'm going to go to Jerusalem serving the saints because I went to Macedonia and Achaia, that region, and they've been pleased to make a contribution to the poor saints in Jerusalem. Jerusalem had, um, I forgot what year it was, early 50s, late 40s, early 50s, they had uh, famine and a lot of hardships and this this is interesting when you read the book of Acts Christians are people who have generous hearts and now Paul is saying uh, the believers in Macedonia area and okay they've given a contribution to help the poor believers in Jerusalem th through their tough times and then he's telling the Romans we need to get the gospel to Spain and so as you read through Acts, we're going through Acts right now on Sunday morning. How are, the book of Acts is one big, what? Story about missions, right? Being obedient to Jesus to share the gospel to the nations. And here we see it in the end of Romans. So Paul wants to strengthen the church. The church need, the everybody in church is gifted with spiritual gifts. And we're in our, in our jobs, in our community, or to live out the Christian faith, Right? We're just to share the gospel with those in our community. 
but we should also be sending out missionaries. This is what we see in the book of Acts. And we see this in the life of Paul in writing to the Romans. He's so he's concerned about the church at Rome, their health. So should we be concerned about local church health? Mm -hmm. Yep. But where does missions come into play? Are you, are you, thankfully, our church, right, all of our offerings, a portion of that all year long, and especially at Christmas, we take up a love offering, and 100% of that goes towards missions. Why? Because Jesus commanded us to go to the nations. We need to be reminded of this often, don't we? Um, we're not taking anything with us. So being, being generous believers to send out missionaries, and now he's saying, I've got to go to Jerusalem first. And yet, look over verse 27. Yes, they were pleased to do so, and they are indebted to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in the spiritual things, they are indebted to them also in material things. Very interesting. I was watching this guy who's a missionary in Israel, northern Israel, and he had a fund on there, and it caught me by surprise about helping to build bomb shelters for Jewish people living in northern Israel. They're not in, some of them are not in the best of shape. And it's a legitimate ministry. And I thought, I mean, and then I was reading the text for today. And what is he, what is he saying? We're indebted to the Jewish people. And now we have some Jewish believers that are struggling. And we've been grafted in to that olive tree, right? To the people of God. Now we are joint heirs. We are as much kingdom citizens as they are. But this is just an interesting verse. Have you ever, I mean, this is a verse that probably a lot of people maybe have never even thought about much. Therefore, when I have finished this and have put my seal on this fruit of theirs, I will go on by the way of you, Romans to Spain. So as you look at your maps, I'm going down to Jerusalem. Then I want to make my way up to Rome on my way to Spain. Right? So Paul's going to stop by Rome. That's my desire. What? Lord willing. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. Can we have wishes and desires? Yeah, we don't always need to say if the Lord wills, but Paul, providentially thinking, I, my desire is to go get the gospel to those in Spain. I want to stop and see you at Rome. So, I mean, this helps us as as me as a minister and right as believers. We're concerned about the health of our own local church. We want to reach our community. We want to see ministries raised up. We want to support them. Sometimes supporting uh, groups that aren't necessarily uh, having the ability to. Uh, preach the gospel like we do at, let's say, a church, but nonetheless our hands-on ministry in town, right? Mm -hmm. To help people in need, right? Right, Denise? Thumbs up for Denise, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we want to pray for, you know, why? Because that's a way to help people in our community. And um, so, love for community, love for our local church. Paul did all these things. Love for the poor saints in Jerusalem. Now I want to go to Spain. I'm glad to be American, are you? Yes. But I'm a Christian. I love Christians all around the world and people of all different cultures. Mm -hmm. Can you have a love for your own town and for other towns? And as Christians, we've got this, should have this global mindset, right? Oh, just some food for thought. Now I urge you, brethren, by the Lord Jesus Christ, by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me and your prayers to God for me. Paul needed prayers. How, how often did Paul ask for prayers? Almost every book that he wrote. Yeah. Don't be ashamed to ask for... I, I, somebody one time said, yeah, I never ask anybody to pray for me. And all I, when I pray, I just say, give thanks to God. Well, that's not Paul's idea. Paul had no problem saying, pray for me. Right? Mm -hmm. Pray for me. And he says what to pray for? that I may be rescued from those who are disobedient in Judea, and that my service for Jerusalem may prove acceptable to the saints, so that I may come to you in joy 
by the will of God and find refreshing rest in your company. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. So in, I, I want to kind of read through these verses, and then we can go back and talk about it. Um, verse 14 through 33, how would you summarize that? As a prayer wish? Ending letter? I want to come to you guys because I want to go to Spain and preach the gospel. That's, that's what God's called me to do, to, to preach the gospel. Also have desire for the health of the church at Rome, as we've seen in the whole book of uh, Romans. We've got desire to see the believers at Jerusalem to do well, because there are brothers and sisters in Christ. And you guys up in Rome, by the way, you should feel indebted to these Jewish believers. Mm -hmm. He's kind of sharing his heart, and in that you see prayer requests. Yeah. Like praying for the saints in Jerusalem, praying for maybe God to open a door for him to go to Spain and... Why might we sometimes be hesitant to ask for prayers and even name them? We don't like to be needy and weak. Yeah. Hopefully this is a corrector in that area, right? Isn't it also just communicating what you want God to do? Mm -hmm. Right? And it's also a bonding when you share your heart with people. It knits your souls together. Yeah. Really. Yeah. We, we ought to be looking for new ways to, what, create more opportunities for that, right? Mm -hmm. More small groups, more online, whatever, face-to-face -face is best, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, He's not talking about the weather and surfacey things. He's gotten to right. what's going on in his heart and mind. And all the different ministries, yeah, of asking for prayer. He, he, like you said, he, he does this in many of his, his letters. So Usually at the end, right? Um, I, yeah, I guess. I, I haven't, you know, in, in my mind right now, um, I know Colossians, he says, you know, I want to preach the word. I feel like um, Philippians. I want to open door. Um, I'm doing well in Philippi. I want to preach the gospel in, in, while I'm in this situation. You're right. He kind of opens with that too. In Philippians. Yeah. And, and to his last letter, probably to Timothy, you know, I poured my life out, as you mentioned that the other day. You guys ever feel like you're not burned out, but you're very, very busy doing even ministry, and sometimes you get worn down? <laughs> you may th Well, Paul was pouring his life out as a drink offering, right? I need prayer for her to stay focused and got a lot of, on my plate. And Is it okay, though, sometimes to say no to good things? I mean, how many of you are faced with good opportunities all the time? Are there good things that you could could say yes to, but then could you have too many irons in the fire? Right? That's happened to me before, right? Where I just had to say no to some even good things. But I also don't want, this life is also short, right? Sometimes we may be a caregiver, right? More homebound to minister to our family, especially maybe when we have young kids or special needs, a lot of different or elderly, parents. elderly parents, whatever it might be, our ministry may be smaller focused for right now. So we shouldn't feel guilty, right? Right now, this is my ministry. What would happen if you start taking on, I know in any of our lives, if we take on too much, what happens? Bad attitude. <laughs> or we may not do any of it well. Yeah. We're just stretched thin. Well. But always praying to be open, right? Because I, I want to, I guess this life seems short, so what is short? To, to be able to say as Paul, um, my life's a drink offering poured out in the sacrifice of service. So any other thoughts you might have here? Open, I think for me, this idea of Spain. Paul's like, I mean, how many more mission trips is he going to go on? I mean, if you track all the places, I, I'd like to look up. Maybe somebody could look up. We, I'll do it maybe after tonight. But I was thinking this the other day. How many miles did Paul put on? Mm. All the missionary journeys. Most of your Bibles will have their routes. Because in the book of Acts, his first missionary journey, all the different areas that he went to. Second missionary journey. 
right? All the different towns, cities that he went to. Third missionary journey. The question is, did Paul have a fourth one? This would be a fourth one, right? Spain would have been his fourth one if he did it. We, there's no evidence in the book of Acts that he made it to Spain, even though he's, he's saying he wants to go, right? I, that ca should cause us maybe to dream bigger than we do sometimes, right? Nothing wrong with saying, I desire to, to go do this, Lord willing, and then we don't get to do it. Okay, but I had a desire to. I want to go on this mission trip, or I want to reach out to this ministry, or I want to right, be involved. But sometimes it's smaller focused. Mm -hmm. I think another uh, thing I've learned in studying this passage is I will not presume to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. This idea of that preposition, through. Right? Kind of like what we saw Sunday. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. Wait, he wasn't persecuting Jesus physically, was he? Well, if he was persecuting Christians, right? Mm -hmm. Now, turn that around. Paul's now saying, man, I only want to speak about what Christ has accomplished through me. Now Paul's used as a vessel, as an instrument of Christ to work through. That's pretty cool to think about, that you're being used of God when you minister to people faithfully. Empowered by the Spirit, hopefully, right? Always in prayer, asking for wisdom. How many do you guys ask for? Sorry, 1,400 miles the first trip, totaling over 10,000 miles. Wow. Yeah. Walking. You guys keep, mm -hmm. keep, keep uh, track of your steps, right? <laughs> uh, wow, 10,000 miles. Yeah. Poured his life out, right? Um, and yet, at times, uh, he, like he spent three years, was it Ephesus or Corinth? Ephesus. Three years at Ephesus, about a year and a half at Corinth. And then he's stuck in jail. I mean, a lot of the book of Acts is when he's just sitting on trial. Two years in Caesarea on the Mediterranean. Two years. A lot of jail time. Trumped up charges. Being a Christian. You know, he's having to sit and wait, but he wrote letters. So we really should never, maybe the Lord has us only ministering in this area right now, but he's, he's working through us right now. He'll open up another door. Aren't you glad that your salvation is not based on your works, but you're saved to what? So we're saved by faith, all by grace. We're saved for good works. But we're saved for good works. So I think it's cool when you see Christians desiring to do good. Desiring to be a blessing. Because what a waste to not have be concerned about other people, right? Or to make a difference. So, do you guys think a lot of people in our society are so self-consumed? They don't really think of yeah, others? That's like why Judy, do you see what Judy said? Paul always refers back to God and Christ, so it's not his plans alone. Yeah. Which is a good point. It is a good point. And yet, Judy, you're right. Um, you know, Lord willing, like James says, uh, you who plan to go doing this and this ought to say if the Lord wills. Now, Paul doesn't always say that, like in the book of Acts, but his desire is to make plans and, of course, always thinking, Lord willing. Mm -hmm. So it's a good reminder, right? And it's a good reminder to not always quickly say yes. Maybe we should spend time praying and praying. thinking about it. Yeah. So we don't get into too many. Too many things. Too many things. Because what if we get, how many of you, have you guys ever met people that are just burned out and they don't do anything anymore? Oh, I, I was burned out my, you know, I've been burned out in church. I, did, I just did too many things. And they don't do anything now. Wait, you, you got burned out years ago. Hmm. Burned out. What does that mean? Yeah, I don't do, I don't do anything really anymore. Really? Can't can't serve anybody. Can't maybe take one one Sunday out of four weeks or three months or every six months to maybe work in the nursery or bring a meal, frozen meals for somebody, right? Something. And by the way, I'm not talking about anybody that I see on tonight. Right. <laughs> okay. Judy. Right. Denise. Others. 
Yeah, it makes me think of, like, Kay Arthur has this saying she does a lot. There's no time, there's no retirement in a time of war. Yeah. As long as we're, That's a good point. we don't retire as Christians and say, well, we're done. We've done our part. Yeah. Yeah. Go pick up seashells and the rest of our lives. Yeah. This life is just so short, isn't it? And, uh, you know, but yeah, it's a good chapter. It's a good ending. Like, Guys, I'm hopeful for you. I believe you're full of goodness. You're able to admonish one another. And I have to admit, I have written to you boldly in some points to remind you to, again, because of the grace given to me from God to be this, to be a minister. So he's sharing his heart also about aspiring to preach the gospel. He lets them in on that. And I want to go on up to Spain, and I want to, I want to see you guys. If, you, if I remember, I didn't write it down, but somewhere, let's see if we can find it in chapter 1 where he talks about, yeah, um, well, he, he's 11. praying for them in verse 9. Verse 9, he's praying for them. And 11, he longs to see them. In 10, he says, my prayer is making request. So he's praying about seeing them. And perhaps now, at last, by the will of God, I may succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you so that I may impart some spiritual gift to you that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you while among you. I love this part. Here it is. Each of us by the other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often had planned to come to you and been prevented. So, you know, of course, then he goes on to say, I want to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome. Um, so even in chapter 1, it's, it's kind of like these bookends. Now, if we said the whole book of Romans is about Paul desiring to go see the Roman believers, because we see that in chapter 1 and chapter 15, what would you say to that? No. Yeah, because how does that fit with all these other chapters? So can a book, can, he can state more than one purpose. I'm writing this, by the way, I'd love to come see you guys. And I would like for you to help me get to Spain because I want to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. So he starts off with, and another thing I love is this reciprocal nature in chapter 1. Yeah, Denise commented about that. I'm encouraged. I could, name, I could say something about all three of you ladies right here tonight about your faith. It's an encouragement to me. Judy, you being excited to teach Galatians, and I heard you did a great job, and I can mention some other things the nursery. as well. She's a great And uh, Denise, always have a heart for like missions and kids and and your God has given you the spirit to continue to do those things. And we're encouraged, Pam, how she ministers to so many ladies and mentors and does Bible studies. I'm encouraged. So it's this reciprocal ministering to each other, the ministering the, to the body of Christ. A lot of times I hate to say it, people think, oh, the pastor's the minister. Well, we're all ministering in different ways. Yeah, I'm called to shepherd and to teach God's word and to oversee. But if you're a Christian, you have spiritual gifts, and we're all called to like be a witness, to be an encouragement. And I do love it here that Paul says, I want to be encouraged by our fellowship together. So as we close out the book of Romans, uh, these two bookends, I want to come see you guys. God's at work. I want to be encouraged by your faith. And he's closing with that as well, reminding them of him coming there. But also looking at this whole body of Christ, worldwide, right? Believers in other cities, believers of different denominations, right? Jesus prayed. I mean, we have to love Christians. We have to make sure that um, we really let others know that we love them in the Lord. Um, that's something I've just been, it's been on my mind lately too, is... That was Jesus' prayer, and to do what we can to foster that. So, um, Yes, thank you for that invitation. We can uh, now call you out. <laughs> no, likewise, right? We're, we're in this together. To, that Paul is confident that um, you're full of goodness, able to admonish one another. You know, if you truly love each other, and, you, and you're sharing prayer needs and stuff like that, it's not a problem because you know that oh, they're my brother in Christ. And I'm not offended. Mm -hmm. 
That's a healthy community, by the way, that can do that, right? To do that together. So, well, next week we will be, oh, we do have some time. We're going to go all the way through chapter 16 because it's, once again, it'll tie into chapter 15. Paul's got a long list of people that he's met in a lot of different areas and uh, who are part of the body of Christ, who God is, is working through. So, Verse 32, I want to mention something there too. Um, so once again, verse 30, uh, striving together with me in your prayers to God for me. So letting other people know, if you need prayer tonight, you know, in our church, text, right? It's messenger, call. Maybe you don't want it on the prayer list. We do have a prayer sheet. But if you don't want that and you've got some real prayer needs and maybe even more intimate prayer needs like that you can't mention, what do I mean by that? Well, it could just be things like uh, family issues, workplace issues, relational ship issues, maybe depression or struggles or temptations that you ladies you need to find other ladies that you can have confidence in, right? We need more of that too and likewise with the guys. Uh, that's one of my desires. I mentioned some guys I want to start meeting at least once a month just for coffee and I just think more that we can do small groups. you know we had the picnic, but the more that we get together, the more you feel like I could mention uh, a work situation. A family situation something that you wouldn't want on the prayer list Paul does have some things that he doesn't mind being worldwide <laughs> right we, just think about this we have a prayer list of Paul in the in the New Testament you know he wants to be delivered from those who are disobedient in Judea he wants to go to Spain he wants to serve the Saints the poor Saints in Jerusalem and verse 32, I'll close with this, so that I may come to you in joy by the will of God and find refreshing rest in your company. Refreshing rest by the will of God, with joy, in joy. That'd be another interesting study, wouldn't it? Did Paul suffer a lot for being a Christian? Mm -hmm. And yet, what did he have? Supernatural, God-given peace. Um, just doing... Uh, by the way, I did put on Facebook the um, free book by John Piper, 30 Reasons Why He Loves the Apostle Paul. And if you think about all that Paul went through, all the hardship, yet he remained a joyful Christian, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Right? So that I may come to you in joy by the will of God find refreshing rest so let's pray that you know i want to i want to continue to minister in joy and you guys want a minister that ministers in joy don't you because what did the writer of hebrews say if not that's not going to be very profitable for you right you don't want a minister who's a crank all the time just angry at the world and angry at the church and angry at life and is burnt out so pray for me i want to be able to minister in joy and um, love the refreshing company of other believers. So hope you do too. That's why we're on tonight. So be praying what we're going to do next after Romans. But we have at least one or two, at least, I think maybe it might take two weeks, you think? I don't, I don't know. So maybe. we'll we'll see. I'll study it this week or next week and we'll see. Any uh, prayer needs uh, that you don't mind being shared in the open? You can do it on Facebook right? You can be on the prayer list. Or if you need a personal prayer, get with somebody. So, All right, well, let's close in prayer tonight. And uh, Lord willing, hope to see you Sunday. Lord, we give you thanks once again that we get to meet online. And uh, for those maybe who will uh, join in later, we thank you for your word that it never returns void. Thank you for saving us, gifting us with spiritual gifts to be able to serve others with the power that you give us. Give us wisdom in this time that we live in. We do pray for supernatural joy, that even in the midst of hard times, we would not lose our joy in you, and that we would find 
refreshing rest in the company of fellow believers. Um, we just pray for those that were on tonight. Uh, blessings on the rest of their week. Thank you for the time together tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. <coughs> you okay? Yep. All right. We'll see you next time.